The next topic is going to be about uh, study designs. So, so far we have covered uh, uh, the importance of uh, research. We have covered how to come up with a uh, good, answerable, clear, direct uh, research question, uh, and how to do a literature review. And the next step is once you have your topic, once you know what's been done, and so on, you have to pick up the most appropriate study design uh, uh, to suit your objective. Now, to, uh, to introduce this topic, I will talk about the types of research. Basically, we have two types of research. One of them is called qualitative research, and one of them is called quantitative research. So, the qualitative research uh, is a type of research which involves uh, things like interviews and observations. But it does not involve any formal measurement. In other words, if I'm interested in a certain topic, I do not measure, I do not quantify the, uh, the things I'm interested in. Rather than I just observe and make interviews with people and based on their answers and the interviews that I have, I will conclude certain, uh, 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 with certain conclusions. So, basically, qualitative research is done on a very small number of patients or people. So we take, let's say, five or ten people, we have an interview with them, we ask them questions, they answer, and eventually we record everything that they are saying. And what we do is we listen to this over and over and over again, and we make themes or we try to make sense of what they are saying. So this is why it's called qualitative, because there is no formal measurement. On the other hand, quantitative research is where we do systematic measurement and quantification of results. And this is where we use statistics. So basically even, uh, for example, if I'm measuring uh, blood pressure, I give it a number, so I'm quantifying it. Even if I'm doing something like quality of life, which is kind of qualitative in nature, but again, there are scales and questionnaires that will give numbers to the quality of life. So again, I'm quantifying the quality of life. So whenever I'm doing a quantitative research, I have to give numbers to anything that I am including in the research. Now, if you ask me uh, which research are we going to be uh, uh, using, I would say most research that are done in the medical field are quantitative research. You will uh, very rarely find qualitative research in the medical field. This is why the focus of my presentation will be on quantitative research. Okay, so uh, under observational studies, we have two types of, uh, uh, or two categories of, of research. One of them is called descriptive studies and the other one is called analytical studies. What are descriptive studies? Descriptive studies are the studies that are descriptive in nature. In other words, we might have a research question or a topic that we are interested in that is descriptive in nature. For instance, if we are uh, trying to assess the prevalence of hypertension or the incidence of uh, 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 myocardial infarction or the average survival rate in ICU patients, all of these questions that I just gave you are descriptive in nature. We are just describing a certain uh, uh, occurrence of a certain disease or outcome or whatever. So this is why we call the study designs descriptive. On the other hand, sometimes I'm, I'm not only interested in descriptive, but I'm interested in more analytical. So if the objective of the study is not only descriptive, but goes beyond description, uh, I would call the study analytical study. For instance, if I'm interested to see the effect of physical activity on hypertension, for instance, the example that we took before, uh, it is not descriptive. It is basically assessing an association between two different uh, things and this is why it's called analytical in nature or analytical studies. So the two categories of studies are descriptive or analytical based on the primary objective of the study. If the primary objective of the study is descriptive, then most likely we are going to do a descriptive study. If it is more advanced or analytical, we'll do analytical study. And finally, uh, uh, we have one type of study under experimental studies, which is the clinical trial. So what I will do now is I will start with the descriptive studies under case report and case series. So what is a case report? A case report is a, uh, uh, is a report that documents unusual medical occurrences that can represent the first clues 
in the identification of new diseases or adverse effects of exposures based on one patient. This is the key point or the key word in the case report. So the case report is a description of one patient. So it's documenting unusual medical occurrences. So assume that you're in your clinic, a patient comes in, and uh, uh, the patient is presenting with uh, some uh, characteristics or uh, symptoms that you've never seen before. And you ask your colleagues, they have never seen it. They don't know uh, anything about it. You uh, go into the literature, you don't find anything. So basically, you have two choices, either to manage the patient with whatever expertise that you have or with your best uh, opinion, or what you can do is you can manage the person with the best uh, opinion that you might have, but at the same time, you can let other people, by publishing a case report, let other people know what did you find or what did you see. So. Uh, when you write a report, a case report on one patient about the symptoms or the, uh, the unusual medical occurrence, this will act as the first clue in the identification of new diseases. So your case report might be an initiation of identification of similar things in the future. Now, most people consider a uh, case report not to be research. Why? Because research is well agreed upon that it is where you collect information, analyze, manipulate, and so on and so forth. Whereas in a case report, you're just describing a patient, right? So this is why most of the researchers do not consider case report as a research project. Nevertheless, case report is very important because if you look in the met uh, medical literature, most of the big topics have been identified and identified and introduced based on case reports. So case report might not be a research project or a research study, but it is the first step in more advanced research. This is uh, an example of uh, a case report. Uh, the title is Papules on the Eyelids, Lips, and Tongue. It is uh, published in the New England Journal of Medicine in uh, March 3rd, 2011. Okay? So basically, I'm not going to go over the whole uh, uh, case report, but it is saying a 16-year-old boy, as we said, a case report is only on one patient. So, a 16-year-old boy presented with multiple flesh-colored papules and dermal nodules on his eyelids, lips, and tongue. Six years earlier, his mother, blah, 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 blah. So, what you can see from this case report that it is a description of this uh, 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 characteristics on one patient and it's just a description of the patient. Now, what is a case series? A case series are collections of individual case reports based on more than one patient. So assume you reported on uh, this topic, somebody else reports on another topic, and so on and so forth. So eventually, when you combine all these case reports, you will have a case series. Again, the same comment will be that case series are not considered research, but they are very important in the research process. This is. An example of a case series, uh, osteoperiostitis in early years, case series and literature review, uh, published in Clinical Infectious Diseases in 2011. And here, the abstract will be, we describe the clinical and radiological manifestations and outcome after treatment of seven children who received the diagnosis of so on and so forth. So basically, case report on one patient, case series on multiple patients. And they report on the findings, and so on. Now, I'll go to the cross-sectional study. The cross-sectional studies are studies that are cross-sectional in nature. What do we mean by cross-section? A cross-section, by definition, is something that you cut, uh, and you get a cross-section out of it. Uh, so how would a study be cross-sectional in nature? It means, usually, we refer to the cross-sectional studies uh, as a snapshot usually you are taking a snapshot because it's descriptive you remember it is a descriptive study so when you want to describe something cr uh, through a cross-sectional study you are taking a snapshot a snapshot as if you're taking a picture and seeing what's happening among the community or you're taking a cross-section in time so basically you are taking a descriptive uh, picture or information about the community uh, at a certain point in time, at one point in time. 
Now, somebody might ask, a cross-sectional study might take three months or one year to be carried out. So how would it be cross-sectional in nature? Or how could it be at one point in time when it might take one year to be carried out? I would say that a cross-sectional in nature is for the patient rather than for the whole study. So each patient in a cross-sectional study is seen at one time only, right? As compared to other studies, as you will see, that they will be follow, follow up. In other words, a patient is seen today, and then the patient is seen after one month, and the, patient, uh, the same patient is seen after uh, one year. So this makes it, this does not make it a cross-section study. So a cross-section study is a study where you take the patient once, you take the information from them, and that's it. So it is at one point in time. So a cross-section study is also called survey. Why? Because the most frequently used data collection method in a cross-section uh, study is through filling out surveys, right? Now, usually epidemiologists like to use these terms, exposure and outcome. What is an exposure? Exposure, uh, an alternative word for exposure is a risk factor, okay? or independent variable. So we have three terms that we usually use for this characteristic, and I will explain what it is. It's a risk factor, or an exposure, or an independent variable. These three terms are reflecting on something that you are interested to see the effect of, okay? So I'm interested to see the effect of this exposure on an outcome. The outcome, usually could be a disease, right? Or it could be a dependent variable. So usually we use another three terms for the outcome. Outcome, disease, or dependent variable. These three terms are used for the outcome. But basically, I'm going to use these two terms, exposure and outcome, throughout my pre presentation. But my point is, I want to see the effect of the exposure on the outcome. Sounds good? Now, uh, you might ask, well, uh, uh, the cross-section study is descriptive in nature, and it should be describing. I would say yes, absolutely. Although I'm, it is a cross-section study, but I'm doing exposure and outcome, both. Not only exposure, for example, or not only outcome prevalence of hypertension or prevalence of diabetes, I'm doing exposure and outcome. For instance, let me give you an example. If I'm interested in the prevalence of uh, mm. hypertension, okay? What would, what would the type of study be? It will be a cross-section study, right? Because it is des descriptive in nature. Now, when you do the whole study and you collect information about hypertension, what would you be interested in? Are you going to only be interested in reporting that uh, the prevalence of hypertension, for example, is, if I say the prevalence of hypertension uh, was found to be 25%. So this is the objective of the study. And finally, I found the prevalence to be 25%. Are you going to stop here? No. Most probably, you will find or try to find predictors of hypertension. What do I mean by predictors of hypertension? I mean that uh, I would like to see, are males more likely to have hypertension as compared to females? Are, for example, young more likely to have hypertension as compared to old? Uh, are educated more or less likely to be uh, hypertensive as compared to non-educated, and so on. So basically, this question is the primary objective. You remember when we talked about objectives, that we can have one primary objective, which is the prevalence, cross-sectional, descriptive in nature. But you have multiple secondary objectives. So what I'm doing here, through this, I'm answering the primary objective, but the secondary objectives are more analytical in nature. So in this case, in the secondary objectives, I'm interested to see the association now between gender and hypertension, education and hypertension, and so on and so forth. And this is why, even in a cross-sectional study, I'm talking about an exposure and outcome. So in a cross-sectional study, exposure and outcome, which is, let's say, education and hypertension, are assessed simultaneously among individuals in a defined population. In other words, all the information that I collect in a cross-section study are collected at one point in time, okay? I do not collect some information 
now and some other information at a later point of time. Since it's a cross-sectional study, all of them are collected at one point in time. And no sampling of individuals based on an exposure or an outcome. In other words, I do not take my sample. A sample is uh, part of the population. A population is everybody. A sample is part of it. Usually, I'm doing my study on a sample. I will go in more details uh, if, if you would like to. Uh, but basically, I take people into my study not based on these two variables. Now, in a cross-section study, we have a defined population. Assume that we're doing uh, uh, prevalence of hypertension in uh, Saudi patients uh, or Saudi people. So the population will be any person who's living in Saudi Arabia or any person who is of a Saudi nationality. Now, from the defined population, uh, before I go into that, uh, of course, time is forward, OK? We are going uh, forward in time. But when I'm starting my study, it's at one point in time. Although it might take maybe one year to finish, but again, each patient is seen at one point, And this is what makes it cross-sectional in nature. So in the defined population, I'll take a sample. Now, this sample, there are so many different ways to take the sample. Uh, the best way is to take it in a random fashion, right? So that each member of this whole population will have the same chance of being in my sample, okay? Now, uh, and once I take my sample, let's say I take 300 people from the uh, community, I'll start measuring their exposure and outcome. Are you educated, non-educated? Are you a male, a female? Do you have hypertension, no hypertension? Uh, are you physically active, yes or not? So basically, I record all the information at one point in time, and then I divide people into different uh, groups. So this is the layout of a cross-sectional study. Now, when I want to talk about cross-sectional study and the other studies, I have to mention something about a two-by-two two table. So what is a two-by-two two table? A two-by-two two table is a way to summarize results from any study, whether I'm doing a cross-sectional study, a cohort, a case control, or a clinical trial, I can summarize results by this uh, two by two table. Now, what are the items in the two by two table? Basically, we have the exposure. What's the exposure? Yes, no. So we can talk about, let's say, education, educated, non-educated, okay? And what's the outcome? Hypertension, yes and no. So basically, I can look at these as numbers. So for example, I have a number of people who are educated and have hypertension, and b number of people who are educated but no, uh, no hypertension, and so on. So basically, I'm summarizing all the results over here. I think it will be clearer if I go over an example. So this is an example about the prevalence of and factors associated with persistent pain following breast cancer surgery, okay? So prevalence of uh, persistent uh, pain following breast cancer uh, surgery. Is this descriptive or analytical in nature? It is descriptive in nature. This is why they decided to do a cross-sectional study. Now, it was published in JAMA in 2009. Here they say the objective. The objective was to examine the prevalence. You